Well, hold on. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the um, Quant Financial Engineering Podcast. So uh, my name is Patrick Zorro, and I am here today with Charles Dodson. Um, I don't often do that uh, because Charles is a graduate of the program. And um, uh, I thought that we usually tend to have um, a more uh, senior um, uh, researcher and, and practitioner on this program. But I think that it doesn't really mean anything because in this particular case, I think that Charles is working on something quite interesting. Uh, essentially, and, and I will let uh, Charles introduce himself and talk about um, his, his project, uh, which is getting a certain amount of uh, interest uh, from some people on Wall Street. But uh, essentially, uh, what he's looking to do is uh, using his algorithm, he has built a trading strategy and uh, quite successful, I might ask, I might say. So, um, Charles, further ado, introduce yourself a little bit and tell us how you came up, a bit of a history behind this strategy and what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, I'm um, Charles Dodson. Uh, I'm going to be graduating December 2023 from the program. Um, and essentially, the idea was this crazy idea that I had um, with no footing or anything and through some of the advisors of the project in the beginning it moved away from trying to model asset prices as waves create wave functions into just a pairs trading strategy um and from there i i had a hard time understanding how people pick the pairs right you know because i already knew correlation wasn't the best measure um so i created a i created an algorithm to pick the uh to pick the pairs um and then i chose a small universe to test it out on um and it worked and that's essentially what happened um there is more that i would like to do in terms of the wave modeling um for but that's for the actual trading strategy not necessarily it's not necessarily the algorithm as of right now i can pick pairs quite well actually due to the algorithm okay so Let's not go too far right now. Tell us a little bit about what you mean by a pair trading strategy. Okay, so a pair trading strategy is pretty simple. It's, in essence, if I were to explain it to someone who had you know no knowledge of it, I would say you look at a graph. Over time, these two things seem to move pretty closely together. And when they stop moving closely together, you buy one and you sell the other because then they'll come back and start moving together. It's very, it's not, it's the, the idea of it is quite simple. But, and that's what you mentioned, correlation. Right, and then correlation, it's not a great measure. Um, you should probably use co-integration, but then even then, if you just use co-integration, co that it might not yield great results over the long term. So you need a sturdier filtration to choose proper pairs. You know, it's interesting you say that about correlation because Taleb Nassim also is not a big fan of correlation. He had a whole video on that a while back. Mm -hmm. So, um, and 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 you're getting away from the more um, accepted, I guess, metrics or statistical methods. Uh, because when you say when you say that correlation is not doesn't work, is it because you, again, you said you mentioned some something else that's better than correlation. What is that? It just, all it is, it, look, co correlation should be used. It is a great statistical measure. Um, but if we are trying to create some form of decision making that is going to yield us long term results, it's not the best measure. One, because it's it's really only used when the process is linear, and if we can look at Asset prices, we know that's most likely not the case. Definitely not the case. Um, it doesn't really account for randomness. Um, even if you have a stochastic process that's highly correlated, it it still over the long term. Like what I'm trying to say is correlation is great for the short term. Um, when you use co-integration, essentially you're looking at the co-movement, which is essentially what we want. Right? If we want the co-movement of two things that move together. That should probably be a measure that we want. 
Okay. So we're going to use co-integration. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what you used. So what yeah. did you note? What so and 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 by the way, what, what type of coding did you use or language did you use to to move around that universe? Python. Python. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. co-integration works. The hurt and then there is another thing is for if you're looking to pairs trade, um and the 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 spread between the two assets, uh they should be mean reverting. So you need a score to measure um, mean reversion. Then you can use the Hurst score. I think that's probably the best measure right now. Um, if anyone's going to get into this, I probably wouldn't use, I mean, this is getting into the weeds. I wouldn't use um, the second moment of the Hurst score just because it's not, uh, sure. If you want a mean reverting process that's been mean reverting for, you know, 70 years, that's great. But if you're looking for a more short-term relationship, um, I would look at the first moment of the Hurst score. That's just, I'll, that's getting into the weeds, but yeah. Okay. How long have you been working on this thing? I mean, since we got here, I mean, I remember when I proposed the thing and then everyone yeah. was like, that sounds really cool. Good well, luck. when you came to me, it had something to do with waves and the ocean and, uh, <laughs> and then it ended up being a pair trading, but that's okay. Yeah. So that's about a year ago, really? Yeah. You, yeah, you, actually, yeah. yeah. Right when I proposed it, it would be a year ago. Right now, yeah. What was your What was your biggest challenge in 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 doing this? Um. Look, in my opinion, with what we want to do, the 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 people, the, my cohort and the program, you you don't have to be a master of all but you'd also don't want to be a master of one thing. You have to be a master of a, of a handful of things. So the first part was I mean, the programming. I came from C++, so that happened pretty quickly in Python just for one research purposes, um, just learning syntax, honestly. Um, but the hardest part was not having any footing and then trying to figure out all of the techniques I used to come up with the algorithm is because it brings in machine learning. It brings in, you know, pure math. It brings in stati like actual statistics. So let's talk about that. So mm -hmm. you're bringing in this kitchen, a bunch of things, your coding skills, your math skills, your statistical skills. Mm -hmm. Is it like even ended? Did you did you have to go out to talk to to people to get the knowledge that you did not have, or you didn't get through the curriculum? What what? How did you how did you? Because you came you came from a C plus plus background, which is good. Mm -hmm. But what about the math and the statistics? The math, no, not really. Um, certain people in the program helped me help me accelerate my because I, I wasn't going to use anything I didn't understand um comfortably um except especially machine learning so people in the program who were ahead of me helped me quite a bit speed up the process of understanding uh clustering algorithms that was basically that was the main job of me look I could have plugged in you know sk learn you know scipy and done it but I wanted to understand it and understand the math behind it. What about the statistics? Uh, I, the, the statistics I already knew. Okay. Yeah. Or just a, needed a quick refresher. <laughs> All right. So uh, that was your biggest challenge. Now, did you, did you seek out help, you know, outside help? Was this mostly, did you have to spend a lot of time? I mean, a lot of students, sometimes they go out and, you know, they read uh, other research. Um, yeah, I've read so, so many papers. What is so many papers? Too many papers. Upwards, of, many? upwards of 35. Wow. So you spent a year on this thing. Yeah, I mean, that was 35 mostly, papers. Yeah, okay. I mean, some of them were completely pointless when I didn't have any footing, to be completely honest. But... They were good. Those first few papers taught me how to read a research, a real research paper. Um, but I would say now, 
I would say probably were really to understand what I was doing and then to 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 understand the parts I didn't know in the beginning and then to formulate the idea and then to execute it was probably I used probably around 10 of the papers. So what's driving you here? Is it, oh, I want to get a real good job or I just want to know what the answer is? Um, 35 papers on top of, you know, your curriculum, which is not easy, which requires at least 20 hours of homework a week. So what, what's driving you? Um, a few things. Um, I would probably say I wanted my own thing. Um, that was probably the selfish answer. Um, I, I wanted to be a value add right away when I start in the industry. Um, and I had an idea and anyone who I can say has a quantitative mind just likes having a problem and then thinking of a solution for it and then saying they're right. So basically you walk around sometimes and you're thinking about this thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, amongst other things, yes. No, yeah. well, I know, but I mean, it's, it's not like you I'm going to sit down like a job. Let me do this thing. No, you're probably getting coffee somewhere and you're, and you're, and you're thinking, um, you know, what, 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 what else is going to happen? That, that, that's called drive. You know, actually, that's a good thing to have. Um, now, let's, you mentioned to me something not too long ago. Uh, we, we're diverging a little bit away from, the, from the, your pairs trading topic. And obviously, you can't really go into great details for obvious reason because it's quite valuable. And it could be quite valuable to a few people. But you mentioned to me that there are three kinds of students. And I have to tell you, I've been using this a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> tell it to me again, in your own words. So I I was on the phone with a former graduate, my really good friend, Jack Dean. And whenever we're on the phone, it's, it's quite fun. But other times it's really interesting. Other times it's just, it's that 3.30 feeling and we just need a vent. Other times it's, you know... It, we're, we're friends. And I noticed that whenever kids come into the program, they needed, they needed a path, right? Because it's very easy to say, I'm going to pick the quant risk track, go into research or risk, or I'm going to go into data science and be a data scientist, you know, or, you know, I can see people, you know, falling in love with the computer science of it all and just actually going to go for a PhD, whether that be in math or computer science. Um, so on and so forth. Um, but how do you get the job? That path isn't quite clear for a lot of people. Um, so I kind of took the three or four people that I was closest with to uh, coming here. And it kind of just so happened we all went about getting to where we wanted to get to in different ways, just based on who we are as people. Um, so essentially, I mean, that is kind of, that's the, it's hard because you kind of have to know yourself quite well to be, and be honest with yourself. Cause I would love to be a great test taker. I would love to be able to memorize all of the vocabulary and the the hot buzzwords and everything um but essentially that's not who i am i'm the guy who likes to have ideas build them test them and i like to do the work essentially so from there i kind of said okay well there's three people there's the people who have the i mean these are the extremes right you don't want to have you don't want to be sold onto one thing, right? But there's there's three paths. And if we talk about the extremes, there's who do you know? There's um, what do you have? And there's what do you know? So essentially in those extremes, to get the job, 
the who do you know is you're networking, you have contacts, blah, 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 blah. Um, in the what what do you know? Think uh, stellar math PhD who, blah, you know, et cetera. Um, what do you have is, all right, you're not gonna, we're not gonna have to train you. We're not gonna have to do any of this. You're ready to go from day one. You're evaluated right away based on an idea, a model, et cetera. Those are the three extremes. And one, like if, if a student is watching this, don't buy into just one of those extremes because it won't work. But I think to pick maybe, you know, 51% into one camp, knowing yourself well, I think that's probably the best. So basically, you got three choices, according to uh, Charles Dotson. You could have great grades or, and, as you say, don't be just have good grades as no network whatsoever. Right. You need the network mm -hmm. because you don't want to be fighting with hundreds of kids just for one jobs. You want right. the network that place you there. And then, like you, you also need to do something. You need to be able to show them something. Mm -hmm. Because if you come to an interview and all you have is your grade, um, well, there's always going to be someone with a better grade. Right. So and you can't just rely on who you know, because when you get to the job, especially in a quantitative field, if you can't do the job, you're not going to stick around very long. Yes. But yet it would be nice also if you get those as two to actually have created something, built something, done something that you could explain to someone, a project, which is what you're essentially doing right now, which makes you a lot more marketable because they say, never mind all the rest of the stuff. Can you do this? That's what we want. Mm -hmm. That's what we want you to be doing. And this is what you know, you know what to do. Right. And like the way I like to describe it is the, 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 what do you know is you're great at interviews. The, who do you know, great at networking. And the, what do you have is, is the weird one, which is if you're in an interview and they ask you some crazy, you know, term and you just don't remember the buzzwords or they ask you to formulate something, you say, Hey, I can't tell you, but I can show you. That has value. Great. Well, Charles, thank you very much for your time. This was uh, quite helpful. I mean, we don't want to get too much into detail into your project because you're still working on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're saying that you found something and it's working yeah. and it's reproducible. Mm -hmm. So great. Go, good luck to you. And let's see where you, uh, what happens to you next. All right. Thanks for being with us. Yep. Bye.